How do I feel on stage? I light up. My Aunt Amy had Down syndrome and was raised in a time in this country where my grandparents were encouraged to give her up to foster care. After her death, I was trying to write a play about my family's relationship with her. This is a memoir to, to Lindsay's aunt. You see Lindsay's aunt through us. It's about how we deal with people who have different abilities. The speech pattern is maybe a bit different than the characters in the play who don't have Down syndrome. And I first started by writing down everything I could remember that my aunt had said. And so that sort of helped formulate how I was thinking about the character. I felt that if I was going to include a character who had Down syndrome and had to be played by someone with Down syndrome, but I didn't know how well an actor with Down syndrome could memorize lines or what that meant for the rehearsal process. And it turns out it means absolutely nothing different. Jamie was the first actor off book. She had memorized her lines before anyone else. She's most prepared in rehearsal, participates just like anyone else does. I'm not gonna flash anybody. <laughs> we knew we had to have an understudy for Jamie, so I went back to the agent who had set me up with Jamie and Eddie Barbanel. He came and had prepared Romeo and Henry V and Puck and performed this perfect Shakespeare. So we came up with the solution to write a male version of the play. The audience is going to see Andy and the Orphans versus Amy and the Orphans. Having two different types of shows, but the storyline being the same, it's truly incredible. I think I want the audience to just be in the theater with someone with Down syndrome and listen to them. The beginning, it starts off in a, like a hotel scene. And listen to them in a way that maybe you wouldn't do in your daily life, and then hopefully you can take that outside of the theater to listen to them in a new way. My monologue is the same thing as Jamie's monologue. The monologue t teaches people to accept people for who they are, not what they appear to be. It's not about uh, being a victim and it's not about apologizing for their presence, but about just owning it and being joyful and sort of celebrating their life. And every time I see a barrier, I break them in half. And that's what I want to see in this play, that the barriers are broken and to accept people for who they are. This is the biggest opportunity of a lifetime. It's a very empowering play that everybody needs to see.